hello everyone welcome back today we will be discussing about compression members and when i say compression members the first thing that will come to your mind is what are compression members compression members are nothing but these are those members which carry always the compressive forces that means the main function of compression members are to receive the compressive force these members are also known by the names columns struts tensions now if we talk about the multi-story structures in this type of multi-story structures these are the columns in a building which are meant to support the gravity loads which are applied to this kind of building frames now coming to the brace frame these are the braces which are provided to provide lateral restraints to a column also so that they can resist the horizontal forces due to uh, any kind of wind loads or earthquake loads now if we come to the next figure in this kind of roof truss the compression members are present as struts these are the struts in the form of web members and the top cord members so now we'll take a question on how to find out the design compressive strength of this kind of members but before going to the question if you are new to the channel please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get the notifications on this kind of videos so let's take the question now so the question says calculate the design compressive strength for a column made up of ishb 350 at the rate 710.2 newton per meter and 3.5 meter height the column is restrained in direction and position at both the ends use steel grade of fe410 the column is subjected to a load of 1500 kilonewton if we go to the solution of the question the things which are given to us is the height 3.5 meter and also the ultimate tensile strength is 410 newton per mm square and also the yield stress is 250 newton per mm square so now after we have noted down the given things we can go to the step number one which is to find out the properties of the given section and this properties will get from the steel table page number 14 so here you can see due to for the tension for the section which is 350 at the rate 710.2 newton per meter mentioned in the question here all the properties are mentioned that is the area of the section the thickness of the web thickness of the flange the radius of gyration everything is mentioned so we can note down the properties for our further solution what is our area the area is 92.21 centimeter square height is given to be 350 mm width is 250 mm and so on the thickness of the flange thickness of the web thick radius of gyration about x axis radius of gyration about y axis and also the r minimum is provided to us so the next step is to calculate the effective length which we will find out in the is code 800 2007 table 11 page number 45 so also we know that in the question it is mentioned the column is restrained in direction and position at both the ends which means if we go to table number 11 we will see that in the question since it is mentioned that one end is restrained and the other end is restrained so here you can see this both the ends are restrained and for that the effective length is given to be 0 0.65 into l the height of the column or the compression member so you can see here what is mentioned it is the effective length which we have already seen that it is 0 0.65 l so utilizing this we have effective length is 0 0.65 l where the height we know it is 3.5 meter so that gives us our effective length kl which is equal to 2.275 meter now if we go to the step number three that is to calculate the slenderness ratio now what is slenderness ratio it is the effective length by the radius of gyration so that we can find out we already know that kl value just now we had calculated and the value of r minimum we got from the properties in the step number one which we have noted and this gives us our slenderness ratio to be 43.582 now once we have calculated the slenderness ratio the next step is to calculate the buckling class that is we'll get it from is 800 2007 table 10 which is in page number 44 so if we see there in page number 44 we will see 
see these are the built up member you can see the channel angle sections welded sections hollow sections welded eye sections but we are the main concern for us is the rolled eye sections that is this one and here we can see there are limits given to us for a, this particular kind of rolled eye sections h by bf that is the width of the thickness should be greater than 1.2 and the thickness of the flange should be less than or equal to 40 nm if this condition is satisfied then according to this the buckling axis we will know along which direction or along which axis the compression member is going to buckle and when we know this axis we can easily get the corresponding buckling class the buckling class will be decided by the radius of gyration the minimum radius of gyration will be in whichever axis that will be the axis which we have to consider for buckling now we know we have to check the h by bf that is the width of the flange we know 250 height of the compression member is 350 that will give us to be 1.4 which is greater than 1.2 that means this limit is satisfied now we have to check the thickness of the flange whether it is less than or equal to 40 mm or not so if we see our thickness of flange was given in the properties we got from the properties it is 11.6 mm that means this is less than 40 mm that is, that is both the conditions or the limits are satisfied so that means the buckling class will be corresponding to this that means either z axis or y axis and how to know that which is the axis along which we have to corresponding to which we have to find out the buckling class so if we go to the this thing we know r x x is given to be 14.65 centimeter r y y is given to be 5.22 centimeter from the steel table we already got this properties then now we can see here r y is the minimum that means the radius of gyration along y axis is less as compared to the r x x in the x direction so that means our compression member will buckle along the y-axis so from this table we can find out for the first limit the y-axis if we go to corresponding to the y-axis the class is b that means our buckling class is b so therefore our buckling class is about y-axis that is the b now the next step is to calculate the design compressor stress fcd which you will get from table 9a 9b 9c 9d from page number 40 up to 43 in is 800 2007 now if we go to the tables of is 800 2007 the 9a b c d from 40 to 43 so let us move to 40 to 43 yes, these are the tables 9a 9b 9a for buckling class a but we have got our buckling class to be 9 uh, sorry buckling class to be b so we will be checking the table 9b which is for the class b buckling class b here in this table you will see this is a table of the design compressor stress fcd we will have to find out the fcd value here in this column kl by r values are given to us also the fy value is given to us 250 in our question so we can calculate the fcd values from this table for a particular kl by r value which we have already calculated for the sandiness ratio which is 43.258 our fcd value what would be the fcd value that we will find in table number 9b so let us go back to 9b table number 9b where we will get our value kl by r is 43.528 which is between these two values 40 to 50 and our yield stress is 250 so for that 194 and sorry 216 and 200 206 and 194 is the value so we have to interpolate the value so that we will get the fcd value for the particular kl by r value so let us note down the values so for 43.582 what will be our fcd we have to interpolate this so after interpolating we will get our fcd value to be 201.8 newton per mm square so once we have calculated the fcd value it is very easy for us to calculate the design compressive strength so let us find out the design compressive strength from is code 800 2007 
clause number 7.1.2 page number 34 so once we go to the page number 34 this is the clause 7.1.2 which says that the design compressive strength pd of a member is given by p less than pd where pd is a design strength and p is a normal factor load or any loads pd is equal to ae into fcd which is this now putting the values ae we already know from steel table that it was 92.21 centimeter square so putting the values fcd we have already calculated so design strength we have got to be 1860.79 kilonewton which is greater than 1500 kilonewton according to the question it was mentioned the section has to carry this much so therefore it is safe our design compressive strength is greater than the load which it has to carry so now it is a practice time so i'll be giving you two questions which are these two questions the first question is very simple the one which we have just now calculated or solved is similar to the question number one where you have to determine the design compressive strength of the column here and but the question number two there is little bit of twist there that there are two effective lengths provided to you in the question which is one is seven meter with respect to y axis and five meter along the x axis so you have to calculate the design compressive strength of seven meter and separately and for five meters separately along different axes so since you have different axes you will have different different compressive strengths so you have to check whether it is safe or not so yeah do try to solve this questions and if there is any problem do mention me in the comment section and if you find difficulty for in solving the question number two do let me know uh, then i can solve it in the next lecture next video lecture where i'll show you how to solve this question number two thank you so much for watching the video and if it, the video was helpful to you you can hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel thank you so much